Up next on Turner Classic Movies is the 417th installment of our 1,000 part mini mini series, Dance of Cinema. In this week's episode, we hone in on the man that defined the on screen male persona, Clark Gable. He was born in Ohio in 1901 to German parents. As a young boy, he expressed great interest in Shakespeare and performing. Such girly pursuits, however, were balanced by his teenage years spent tending his father's oil business, farming, and working in a freaking tire factory. He eventually moved to Oregon to begin his stage acting career, where he was coached by Josephine Dillon, 17 years his senior. In 1924, the two of them went to Hollywood to begin his film career. She became his manager, and very shortly after, his first wife. He began as an extra in silent films like The Merry Widow and The Plastic Age. It was acting prowess on stage, however, that got him his first big break when MGM execs noticed his performance in the LA stage production of The Last Mile. His first role in a sound picture was in the western The Painted Desert. In 1930, Gable and Josephine divorced, at which point he married Texas socialite Rhea Franklin Prentice Lucas Langham only a few days later. With his popularity skyrocketing, Joan Crawford asked for him by name to co-star with her in Dance Fool's Dance. Later, on the set of Possessed, the duo reunited and steamed up their professional and personal relationship, while of course still married to other people. A few years later, in 1934, he starred in It Happened One Night with Claudette Colbert, a role that he reportedly hated, yet the public and critics loved. He won the Academy Award for it, in fact. Perhaps his most famous role was in the film adaptation of Gone with the Wind, a book that he refused to waste his time reading when the role was first presented to him. This film's ending was the context for arguably the most famous line in movie history, and one that pretty much sums up everything you need to know about Clark Gable. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Knowing full well no single earthly woman could scale the mountain of testosterone that was Clark Gable, the man graciously divided the task between five wives and a slew of extramarital philanderings. Though he managed to survive an attack on his plane during his service in World War II, in true alpha male fashion, Gable died of complications soon after his heart exploded in his chest. Doctors believe this massive cardiac combustion was due to the ferocity of his manly exertions on the set of his final film, The Misfits.